there was one question that it is very obvious that no one is the doer and the receiver of the doing then who is the supreme doer and what is the purpose of doing now but the things are happening and so who is doing it what is it that is doing it okay i answered in this way and there is not doer there is doing and now uh, this is language problem probably that uh, we do not uh, say doing if there is not doer we say it happening we say it as it is happening not uh, the doing so is something to do with the language so let, there are two questions you know uh, who is the supreme doer and what is the purpose of doing now the second question is redundant because all you need to show is that there is a supreme doer and then you can uh, let the supreme doer have any purpose they have they want the wish so the second question will disappear if we show that there is no supreme doer it is kind of amazing that people think like this that everything needs to be done everything needs to be created and everything must have a reason it is amazing that we think like this and most of the people they do not um, come out of this uh, attitude for the whole of their lives it must be doing of something isn't it and then uh, the religious kind of people they will export the reason into the sky somewhere where it belongs pro- properly and the spiritual kind of people those who you know <laughs> read a lot of scriptures and all they will export it to the karma the theory of karma cause and effect how oh, it happened it is the doing of this and that impressions sanskar and all and i must have done something wrong that's why i got this fruit it is the doing of my own and so on this is a kind of spiritual view now at these these are all half truths i'm not saying they are totally wrong it can be explained like this but half truths half of it is wrong can somebody guess <laughs> can somebody guess here what is wrong with the concept of supreme doer now yes the individual doer is gone thrown away that deserves you know the person deserves a medal for that not my doing and not my karmic uh, things somebody is there but something is turning the wheels so can somebody think of an answer to this question the how can anything happen without it being done you can you know put a name on that mother nature is doing everything even i say many times you must have heard this. mother nature is doing it there is some something very interesting that happens and the body is doing its thing and people think that i am doing it and then they say oh, this is being done by mother nature because it cannot let go of this concept of doing and doer they need to export it somewhere and that's why i i also say it is happening when a child is born the parents take the responsibility <laughs> oh it is my doing we are responsible for the birth of the child and therefore the child is my property now i own it just like i own other objects now it is good from the social point of view because our society is based on such concepts of doer doing responsibility and position otherwise this society will fall away can you can you imagine <laughs> i i was shocked i'll tell you a little bit of story because this is our you know satsang <laughs> that um, i heard osho one day i was he, he was i think i read it or he was talking he said children are the property of the society in his typical voice you can imagine very slow voice so i was shocked actually i came to know that this is always the case this is the truth the osho said this and something clicked in my mind i said yes there's so much truth in that you see when you hear some 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 of the things like this for the first time what do you hear uh, well it, it looks like it was always true isn't it i always knew these things and thanks for reminding me so something something like that that happened 
and uh, that is because the ownership of the child is taken up by the ego by the ego of the parents it is not a doing of the parents it is a happening i'm i'm you know straying away from the proper answer because you already know the answer isn't it we have repeated this thing so many times now you know these answers so i'm taking you in a different direction just something new so i realize oh yes it's so right so true the parents don't own the child the child belongs to mother nature and no nobody is going to donate their child to mother nature because what, what is the what is the view of mother nature for an ordinary person the jungle <laughs> the hills the rivers the birds and insects oh, well it is so sad it is very sad that we have cut down the mother nature into a tiny thing which is which we capture in photographs and post it on twitter so it is very sad everything is mother nature so the children they belong to everything actually now you cannot tell this to the parents isn't it they will be furious how can you take my property away so no we should not do this don't go to a ordinary person and tell them oh your uh, three sons they don't belong to you <laughs> you don't have any control over them okay let them go and now that, that uh, father is going to kill you so osho did not go all the way probably he did who knows he is osho but he he stayed in the middle he said that the children are a property of the society it's not parents job to raise them or to claim them as their own society should raise the children society should claim them and what is society then is an organization of people only so not one person will be made as owner of the child his view is like this and i immediately agreed somehow because <laughs> <laughs> probably tired of my parents so any teenager will do that you see oh, i don't want these parents they don't they, they don't have any right to tell me what to do how to behave how to talk how to dress so till you become a parent you will have this kind of attitude you see as soon as you become a parent you will start doing exactly the same thing that your parents do so it is very interesting that uh, this is a common ignorance among people that they own things that are happening naturally even that so no we don't own anything no we don't create anything we don't do anything nothing at all why because there is no owner it is egoic thought a thought in the ego the ownership the claim is a tendency of the mind this is what we call call ego that is the, that is what generates the identity and the i and the i includes all these things so it's very hard to come out of this attitude i think goro has a comment khalil jibran also said the same thing children come through you but they don't belong to you exactly exactly now i took the, I, i i took this example of a child because it's very shocking isn't it parents don't have any claim on the child it's very shocking to hear these things the parenthood is like walking on a sword sword's edge yes i know it is not mine still i need to treat it as if it is mine can you see now here is spirituality in daily life for you those who think they are and their life as a parent or child is a mess is not spiritual they should listen to the following your body is not you now every every seeker you know even a new be seeker knows this every uh, your body belongs to you not true isn't it? it belongs to mother nature again we still take care of the body as if it is mine as if it is me as if it is my part who is this we who is this i who is taking care of this body which is not i look at it it is also happening only that it is twisted in the mind somehow there needs to be a doer to take care of the body otherwise it will die now notice that this idea is totally absent in animals the that which is taking care of their body at the body and the mother nature all three are one there in an animal you can check you can look at a bird it is the mother nature 
acting as a bird. The bird is not thinking, I need to eat balanced diet in order to be healthy. <laughs> I need to live long. No. This madness appears only in humans because of our inflated ego. We own the body. We think it is me. That is height of stupidity. And we, we say, I, I am responsible for the body. Now, this is one extreme. And the other extreme is, I am not the body. It, it will be taken care of. Somebody will do it. I'll just go and sit in the cave and, you know, whatever. And this is another extreme. So, the middle path is that you disown the body. Give up the ownership and you still act as if you are the body and you, need, you are responsible for the maintenance of the body. This is spiritual attitude. This is how a sane person lives. Both the extremes are insanity. So this came from Buddha actually when he gave up eating and almost died. And then he realized, no, 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 no. <laughs> this is madness. And then he started eating. So he gave, that was a big learning experience, isn't it? So it is happening. The body is happening. And the spiritual life is realizing. Realizing nothing is mine. Still doing that which needs to be done. Still acting as if it, has, it was mine. This is how we play. So what will happen if you do something like this? I don't guarantee it, you know, don't uh, <laughs> take my word for it. But uh, all the problems of your relations will disappear. This is my experience. The relation of a parent and child will become a relation of a friend. Not somebody who owns somebody, enslaves somebody, but a friend. And the child will not see you as a, a commander, as somebody under whom they must live. And they do, will not fear you. The respect comes, should come out of love, not out of fear. You must have seen this complaint is there. Many parents will say, my children, they don't respect me, don't obey me. So the problem is, you have never done anything to earn the respect. Simply because you think you were <laughs> responsible for bringing that child in the world. Which is stupidity, isn't it? If, if, if this ignorance is there, this will be the result. What if you thought that it is just a gift of Mother Nature that has been given to me so that I can take care of this? It is like looks like I'm reading from some book, isn't it? So, but they are not wrong. Uh, if you experiment like this, uh, treat the child as a friend, especially when the child can starts understanding a little bit, and you will you will see that in the face of the child, and nobody likes slavery. Not your own child will like to take orders from you. Nobody likes this. This is human nature actually. But friendly attitude and they will do everything that you <laughs> that you asked them to do. It must be your own experience that I am actually diverting somewhere else but I want to give you this uh, uh, example of spirituality in daily life. How to apply what Osho said. How to apply that. Should I, should I donate my child to the society somewhere? <laughs> And that is stupidity, isn't it? Society is a mess already. You, you don't want to do that. What he meant was, uh, do not own the child, you see. It must be your, your own experience that your siblings, your cousins or your brothers and sisters will never, never do what you say and will never support you and will laugh at you if you fail. And if you, if you, if you are successful, they will be jealous of you. They will laugh again. But your friends... They will bury the body, isn't it? This old saying is that a friend will bail you out of the jail, but a real friend will help you to bury the body. So they are like this. Whatever you want, they will do it with you. They will support you in doing. Whether you are digging a ditch or whether you are robbing a bank, your real friend will be there helping you out. What kind of relation is there with that you have with your friend which you don't have 
with your so-called blood relatives who own you, who have the leash in their hand. What is what is the difference here? A difference is ownership. See, I am not the doer. This knowledge is lacking in a parent. That's why no friendliness. That's why there is a coating of the sticky mess of relation where there should not be a relation except that of a friendship. If you take a look at society, if you take a look at the successful relations, the happy kind of relation, you won't find a bit of relation there. All you find is friendliness. They are friends. The father and son is friend. The mother and daughter are friends. They want to stick to each other. They want to live with each other. It's not that they are avoiding each other. It's not that they are fighting one commanding the other. In friendship, you don't need to command, you see. You need to put your wish there. I, re- I want to watch this movie and your friend will be there with two tickets. Let's go. Ha- have your parents done that? Never, probably. <laughs> Never, ever. So, probably more more you grow up, the less they, w- they will want to do things that you like. No friendship there. What is a typical image of a parent? They feed you as if, you see, they're feeding themselves and uh, they will put you to the torture of the school and they want you to be a doctor always, you see. Nothing more than a doctor as if, or a lawyer, as somebody rich, you see. This is the problem in India that they will even want you to marry somebody they like. Not, not somebody you like, somebody that can make their social status higher. So this is a big problem here in India. Even though we call this a spiritual country, the spirituality is totally absent from everyday life. It is total ego, ego ego-dominated. The message is this, that uh, uh, there is no doer. So you can export the doer to uh, the ego, to the body, to this, to that, just even to the supreme doer. You can go on doing it, but uh, it makes no sense. Because it is happening. It is happening. How to, how to Im- implement that in um, day-to-day life? Just like Osho said, give up ownership as much as possible. Now the question comes again, how am I going to you know, do the things if I am not the doer? Who is going to take it? And the thing is, uh, uh, it will happen whatever your mental state is, whatever your state of knowledge or ignorance is, it will happen. The same thing will happen with this knowledge that there is no doer. Uh, But try this experiment. It's a life experiment. You see, I don't guarantee anything. Try this and give up the ownership and see what is the result. See what is the result. Cannot be described properly. I think I'm doing a bad job of describing it. But... uh, Mostly, uh, you take ownership of the objects, it's, it's okay, it's, it's not a big thing. And the ownership of people, that is deciding the quality of your life, isn't it? People are the problem in your life, isn't it? You have everything. You just click here and click there and everything is delivered to your home. Now, the people are the problem. They don't do as you tell them to do. They don't behave according to your wishes. Why? Because the stickiness of ownership. I am the doer, he is the doer. And he is responsible for my mental condition. The blame game, you see. So, and there is a very good teacher, a young man, Roger Castillo. I, I, that, that line reminds me of him always. And he explains it beautifully. This uh, concept of doer. Most of our troubles come out of the concept of the doer. What will happen if you export the doer in the sky? Call it a supreme doer or this doer or that doer. Your misery is not going to go away. Only the cause will be, you know, something more distant which you cannot see, only you can imagine. The doer is imaginary right here, right now. It will remain imaginary if you assume it to be somewhere else. If you name it supreme or (laughs) if you... Uh, uh, write theories and theories about it, read scriptures and scriptures about it. It's not going to work. And giving up, the doer uh, will bring a little bit of peace. It will relieve you. 
your mind will be unknotted kind of this thing entangled oh finally i don't need to worry about the responsibility something like this will happen your body will relax immediately uh, will it work in the society no no it won't work don't donate your child no don't <laughs> that is not good so donate the other things which you don't need you see you don't need the child probably and child needs you yes, this is a question of survival now so you need to take care of the child as if it is your child as if it is you possess these things and so on a guru will possess a student a employer will will possess employee and your prime minister possesses everybody <laughs> this is how society works he owns the country isn't it this is how the society works the thing is it will happen in a friendly way a background of friendship not of the ownership just like you take care of your friend all the good and bad desires of the friend are your desires isn't it let's do let's do the thing this thing and you are always ready you bang the school you bang the college and you are always ready now i don't think those who are in the job and families now now the friendship has become something else those who have more money and social status are your friend now <laughs> anyway so uh, this is how friendship is it, it is selfless no ownership that's why friendship is the you know a purest of the relation selfless so i gave a non traditional answer to uh, who is the doer i hope it was more entertaining than the old boring answer there is no doer uh, 